What do you think is more special, intelligence or consciousness? I think consciousness, and I think that there's um, a deep connection between these ideas. They are distinct, but they're deeply connected. But look, I mean, to me, and to, of course, many philosophers who actually coined a name for this, the hard problem of consciousness, you know, David Chalmers and others, as a physicist, I look out the world and I see its particles governed by physical law. We can name them. You know, we got electrons, we got quarks that come in various flavors and so forth. We have a list of ingredients that science has revealed. And we have a list of laws that seemingly govern those ingredients. And and nowhere in there is there even a hint that when you put those particles together in the right way, an inner world should turn on. And it's not only that there's no hint, it's insane. I mean, it's ridiculous. How could it be that a thoughtless, passionless, emotionless particle, when grouped together with compatriots, somehow can yield something so deeply foreign to the nature of the ingredients themselves. So so answering that question, I think, is among the deepest and most difficult questions that we face. Do you think it is, in fact, a really hard problem? Or is it possible, I think you mentioned in your book, that it's just like a, almost like a side effect. It's an emergent thing that's like, oh, it's nice. It's like a nice little feature. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, when people use the phrase hard problem, I mean, they mean it in a somewhat technical sense that it's trying to explain something that seems fundamentally unavailable to third party objective mm -hmm. analysis, right? I'm the only one that can get inside my head and I can tell you a lot about what's happening inside my head right now. It's reflected in what I'm saying. And you can try to deduce things about what's going on inside my head, but you don't have access to it in the way that I do. And so it seems like a fundamentally different kind of problem from the ones that we have successfully dealt with over the course of centuries in science, where we look at the motion of the moon. Everybody can look. Everybody can measure it. We look at you know the properties of hydrogen when you shine lasers on. Everybody can look at the data and understand it. And so it seems like a fundamentally different problem. And in that sense, it seems like it is hard mm -hmm. relative to the others. But I do think ultimately that the explanation will be as you recount. I think that a hundred years from now, or maybe it's a thousand. It's hard to predict the time scale for developments, but I think we'll get to a place where we'll look back and kind of smile at those folks in the 20th century and before, 21st century and before, who thought consciousness was so incredibly mysterious when the reality of it is, eh, it's just a thing that happens when particles come together. And, and however mysterious that feels right now, I think, for instance, when we start to build conscious systems, you know, things that, you know, you're more familiar with than I am, when we start to build these artificial systems and those systems report to us, I'm feeling sad. Yeah, I'm feeling anxious. Yeah, there's a world going on inside here. I think the mystery of consciousness will just begin to evaporate. Well, that's, first of all, beautifully put, and I agree with you completely. Just the way you said it, it'll begin to evaporate. I have b built quite a few robots and have had them do emotion, emotional type things. And it's immediate that exactly what you're saying, this kind of mystery of consciousness starts to evaporate. Mm -hmm. That the kind of need to truly understand, to solve the hard problem of consciousness like disappears because, well, I don't really care if I understand or can solve the hard problem of consciousness, that thing sure as heck looks conscious. You know, I feel like that way when I interact with a dog, I don't need to <laughs> solve the problem of consciousness to, to be able to interact and uh, richly in, enjoy the experience with this other living being. Obviously, same thing with other humans. I don't need to fully understand it. And th there's some aspect, maybe this is a little bit too engineering focused, but there's some aspect in which it feels like consciousness is just a nice trick to help us communicate with each other. It sounds ridiculous to say, but sort of uh, the ability to experience the world is very useful in a subjective sense, is very useful 
So put yourself in that world and to be able to describe the experience to others. Yeah. It could be just a social and the merge. Uh, obviously animals, the sort of more primitive animals might experience consciousness in some more primitive way, but this kind of rich subjective experience that we think about as humans, I think is probably deeply coupled with like language and yeah. poetry. <laughs> yeah, that resonates with my view as well. I mean, there's a, a scientist, maybe you've spoken to him, Michael Graziano from mm -hmm. Princeton. Yeah, he um, he's developed ideas of consciousness that, look, I don't think they solve the problem, but I think they do illuminate it in an interesting way where basically we are not aware of all the underlying physiochemical processes that make our brains and our inner worlds tick the way they do. And because of that dissociation between sensation and the physics of it and the chemistry of it and the biology of it, it feels like our minds and our inner worlds are just untethered, like floating somewhere in this gray matter inside of our heads. And the way I like to think of it is like, look, you know, if, um, if, if, if you're in a dark room, right, and, and I had glow in the dark paint on my fingers, so all you saw was my fingers dancing around, there'd be something mysterious. How, how could those fingers be doing that? And then you turn a light, you realize, oh, there's this arm underlying it. And that's the deep physical connection explains it all. And I think that's what we're missing, the deep physical connection between what's happening up here and what is responsible for it in a physical, chemical, biological way. And so to me, that at least gives me some understanding of why consciousness feels so mysterious because we are suppressing all of the underlying science that ultimately is responsible for it. And one day we will reveal that more fully. And I think that will help us tether this experience to something quite tangible in the world.